In a previous video, we discussed many unpredictable traps that can get you killed chasing tornadoes. No, 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 no. Road just ended. Escape route surprises like road closures, flooding, fallen trees, and stalled trains. Don't you love when this happens? In the shadow of tornadoes, we consider the possibility of vehicle failures, collisions, muddy roads, icy roads, huge animals in the road, really, and of course, deviant tornadoes suddenly changing directions. In this video, we're diving deep into predictable, dangerous behavior. The impulsive psychology nudging more and more chasers closer to the edge of death. storm's heaviest concentration of rain and hail is the core. Let's get in front of that. Storm chasers often risk their windshields driving through the core to keep up with the storm or see a tornado on the other side. But sometimes the tornado is lurking inside the core. That's a giant tornado and it might be coming right this way. What have I done? Punching into a core, hoping to see a soggy, rain-wrapped tornado is highly risky and largely short-sighted. It's coming. Giant tornado right next to me. Both times I came close to being killed by tornadoes, they were obscured in precipitation. It's coming. Okay. So why the hell do some of us risk so much to capture sloppy, often passed over and forgotten tornado footage like this? Full of you are aware of the immense dedication and sacrifice it takes to track down and capture these monsters. The pricey gear and gadgets, the expensive wear and tear, the endless driving day after day, the months of preparation each year, and the years of research. After all that investing, when that rare tornado shot is finally in your sights, the need to succeed can be a wicked influence. Oh, that's beautiful. After my last near-death encounter in 2019, I told my family and friends I'm no longer pursuing the highly dangerous rain-wrapped tornadoes. I've learned my lesson and changed my ways. Then this year, I did it again. In the midst of a four-week losing streak and another long commute, I just missed a photogenic tornado in Nebraska. Several of my friends hit the jackpot. From the notch of another storm, I was able to capture a soggy wedge before it wrapped itself in thicker blankets of rain. Escape routes everywhere. That sting of failure was driving me beyond better judgment for a highly unlikely redeeming shot. Kind of see it sideways. Oof. The adjacent winds of the invisible tornado raked across and rocked my vehicle as I fled. All that risk for what? After some deeper internal reflection, I realized I was more susceptible to the impulses of hubris, competition, and need to succeed than I was aware, especially when caught up in the chase. It's like that psycho ex you were in a toxic relationship with. You finally break up for good. You tell all your family and friends and yourself, it's really over this time. Then a week or so goes by and they come by your place to collect their things looking so promising and amazing. And what do you do? Really? Look at that. Tornado shell. 
Thank you. That's all right. This is the typical chaos for a tornado. In the information whirlwind of storm chasing, it's easy to become overwhelmed and confused. Another disoriented chaser racing by might appear confident, and so you decide to follow them to glory. Then another clueless chaser starts following you, and pretty soon, you're in a conga line of confusion. Perhaps this is one reason we're seeing more and more convoys racing into potentially perilous situations. Why are they going that way? Crazy. If you've lost situational awareness, try not to assume others know what they're doing. You may end up following a bunch of lemmings. For some reason, some people drove right into its path. It's the most amazing thing I've like ever witnessed is just spider lightning coming down. Woo. The wind is going in. To be a successful chaser, you're really gonna have to love thunderstorms. 5,000 Cape in Texas, this is what you get. If you don't, daily disappointment and road wear is going to cull you out fast. When that rare tornado moment is bearing down, it's easy for a tornado nut to become a transfixed sitting duck. As massive as they are, these storms have a funny way of sneaking up on you. Try to keep that in mind if you find yourself gawking at one. Which brings us to our next topic. The most dangerous part of the storm is approaching close, but all the other chasers are still sitting there. So you sit there, but they're possibly sitting there because you're not moving. You guys better run. If you're feeling it's time to scamper away, trust your lizard brain rather than the flock around you. While chasing in heavy rain, you may find yourself anxiously speeding at the threshold of your visibility and reaction time. I've found backing off even just a little, three, four, or five miles per hour adds a lot of reaction time and significantly reduces chances of being overwhelmed or surprised. Driving like the Dookie of Hazard. If you see your knuckles turning white, ask yourself, is this really necessary? Look out, guys. Passing can be one of the most nerve-wracking things a chaser can do in a storm, especially passing the sailing and splashing 18-wheelers. If you decide to go for it, keep in mind, strong winds tend to blow things over. Lines are down. Sadly, there are many drivers out there who are losing at life. To them, a passing vehicle is just another reminder of their daily lost battles and failures. So if you're attempting to pass a vehicle and it suddenly accelerates, not allowing you to pass, perhaps just allow them to have and be proud of the one thing they can win at. Bless their hearts. <laughs>